We come now to our main event. This is the battle for the WBO Super Flyweight Championship. We're going 12 rounds. Jorge Traviezo Arce and Anki Ancoda. As we take a look at the tail of the tape, Arce a couple of years the senior of Ancoda and also three inches taller than Ancoda. Both came in at 115 pounds, but Ancoda had to lose a pound yesterday and at this weight division, one pound can really be something. Rules the same as they were in the first fight. 10 pound, 10 point must system is in effect. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Fighter cannot be saved for the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And the, the uh, headbutt rule would go to the cards after the fourth round. What a flashy ring walk here for Jorge Arce. He's been here, he's done that. In his signature black cowboy hat representing the people of Sinaloa and of course, his lollipop. Said he started doing it two or three fights into his career. He said somebody told him that it would calm him, and now he doesn't get nervous anymore, but it's just become a thing for him. And he also said there was really no particular reason for the hat except the people in Sinaloa, where he's from, all wear those hats. Sinaloa Cowboys, baby. Well, this time, a little more calm and controlled ring walk, though. We're going to the introductions for our main event. As once more, we go to Lupe Contreras for the introductions. Lupe. Carácter FSN y Fox Sports en español. Este combate, pactado a 12 asaltos por el campeonato vacante, peso super mosca de la OMB. This bout, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBO Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Supervisor de la OMB, supervising for the WBO, Rafael López Santos. Los jueces de este combate son, the judges score in this bout are, El Dr. Ruben Garcia, Alejandro Lopez Cid y Clark San Martino. El referee, Samuel Viruets. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, desde la capital mexicana, veremos quién es el más macho. Presentando la esquina azul. Vestido de color naranja con color blanco. He stepped into the ring wearing white trimmed in orange. Detuvo la báscula a un peso oficial de 115 libras. He tipped the scales at an official 115 pounds. Su récord profesional, 23 victorias con solo 4 derrotas y 14 victorias por knockout as a professional. He has 23 victories with only 4 losses and 14 of those victories coming by way of knockout. De Ambon, Indonesia. Anki. Ancota. Y el destino puesto. En the opposite corner. Vestido de color blanco. He sent into the ring wearing the solid white trunks. Registró un peso oficial de 115 libras. He registered an official weight of 115 pounds. A nivel profesional. Mantiene un récord impresionante de 56 victorias con solo 6 derrotas, un empate y 40 victorias por la vía del cloroformo. As a professional, he has 56 victories along with 6 losses, 1 draw and 40 of those victories coming by way of knockout. El tres veces campeón mundial, the three time champion of the world. Puro Colonia Obrera, Los Mochis, Sinaloa, México. Jorge, el travieso Arce.
Can the older fighter suck it up for one more great effort? Well, we know one thing. Everybody in this bull ring here is going to be in his corner. Challenger Anki Ankotu, Ankota rather, is from Indonesia, has never had a fight in North America, has only ventured out of his native Indonesia on two other occasions, once to the Philippines and once to Australia. And he runs across the ring to meet Arce, and I'll tell you one thing, Barry, this guy, Ankota, is confident. He has been brimming with confidence. He has no doubt that he is going to retire Jorge Arce here tonight. He's an action guy. He's a guy who's going to be in your face. He doesn't have a big punch. If he's going to get you out of there, he's going to get you out of there by just wearing you down. And running for a low blow to Arce. Chopping left hand by Ngota. Arce really prepared with everything he had for this fight. I would think, though, in a guy like Ankota, you really don't know what you're getting. He fought all his fights in Indonesia for the most part, all but two. Don't know about the caliber of opposition. He did slip it up a cut in there just a moment ago. I would think it would be a little bit difficult to prepare for a guy like this. And he's a left hand. Yeah, I, I, I've seen I've seen some of his fights, and I I, uh, I saw his fight against AJ Banal. Now he did lose that fight, but he uh, again was coming forward uh, throughout that fight, and likes to be an aggressive fighter, and has been getting better. But the fighters he's been fighting in the last year or two have actually not had great records. So he's fighting a guy with a great record tonight in Arce. Well, he's trying to fight Arce, no question about it. He's got a couple of uppercuts in there. I wouldn't think this is where Angotu wants to be. Another shot hangs a little low. Angotu with a willing battler here tonight. Nice uppercut inside by Angotu. Angotu left hand. Ankota has a tendency to drag that right hand a little bit. I think he's had some very effective moments here, though, in round one against Arce. Yeah, it's been a good round for him. Give him a lot of different angles, too. Yeah. He saw that left hand, and then he slipped by him. Exactly, and he's fought inside and outside. Okay, a little slow to start at this one. And a good left hand right there by Ankota. Blood from the nose of Arce early in this fight. Excellent first round by the fighter from Indonesia, Ankota. We'll be back. Welcome back, round number two. Barry Tompkins, Rich Barato alongside. You're watching Top Rank Live from Mexico City. And this is a battle for the WBO Super Flyweight Championship. Jorge Arce, a three time world champion. And the visitor from Indonesia, Anki Ankota. And a good first round by Ankota. The chopping left hand by Ankota to start the second round. Yeah, I thought he was the quicker handed fighter, Ankota, in round uh, number one. Arce a little slow to get things started. Nacho Beristein between rounds told Arce to stand straight, stand right. <laughs> he wants the official Nacho Beristein stance. Doesn't have it from Arce so far. Well, it's tough for Arce, who's only been with him, of course, less than a year. This is his third fight with Nacho. This time, Arce getting a little bit of money on the head. Now, Arce is mixing it up, and he's really landing some hellacious body punches. And Bota can't seem to get himself out of it, or chooses not to. I think that Arce is keeping him pinioned in that corner. Look how he's pushing up against him with that shoulder. He shouldered him right back. This is where the experience of Arce is coming in. Break. I got a break. And again, Alberto goes right back against the ropes and another low blow from Arce. 
And another one. That's three, and he hasn't drawn a warning yet. And another one. This is great work by Arce, and as long as he's getting away with this uh, low borderline punches, now he gets a warning from the referee, and he's going to continue to do it. He really roughed up Ancona in there. There's another low one. Well, that warning was actually for a headbutt, not for low blow, and now he's going to get a warning for a low blow. And this little swelling under the left eye of Ancona comes right back with a low punch. <laughs> <laughs> Arce has completely dominated this round. And Cody never got started in this round. Had an excellent first round. He seems calm as I'm looking at him. Another uppercut by Cody, but not a lot on it. Another thing we should mention, this looks like a small ring. I'd be surprised if this is over 18 feet. Yeah, it's more small. like 16. Well, these guys haven't used more than about four feet of it. And a great round for Arce. Great. And Ancona's going to gather himself, going to have to. We'll be back. I mentioned this, I believe, is a very small ring. And they could have used a four-foot ring in this uh, second round. And it was all Jorge Arce, who completely dominated the action, totally dictated the way that that round would be fought. And to start this third round, well, we started the center of the ring, but now and Goto with his back to the ropes once again. And there's another low blow by Arce. Arce is picking up where he left off. And the referee did go over into Arce's corner between rounds to warn him again about low blows. And Cota's taking a pretty good beating here. There's another low blow. Arce is so popular, and the fans are really letting him hear it here tonight. Yeah, the guy, his nickname, Travieso, means menace, kind of a Dennis the Menace character, mischievous. Uh, he got that when he was a kid. And I'll have to admit, I don't know, he said if he lost his fight, he would retire. This is one of the guys I would truly miss when he, when he goes out of boxing, because he's so funny and so accessible, such an outrageous character to be around. I really enjoyed him. Yeah, well, in fact, he already has another career. He's uh, going to be a commentator for TV Azteca. Those guys working right down the way from us tonight. They already have 17 color commentators. Why not add another? <laughs> including Julio Cesar Chavez. He's already been on a reality show on the Mexican version of uh, Dancing with the Stars and also a big brother, so right. very popular figure here. Well, I remember when Arce fought Hussein Hussein at, in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand uh, Garden Arena. It just brought the house down. I mean, it was such an unbelievable action fight. The same night as, I believe it was Eric Morales and Manny Pacquiao fought. And we thought that that Hussein Hussein Arce fight was going to be fight of the year. We thought that for about 45 minutes until uh, the Pacquiao yes, fight. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what a card that was. <laughs> and again, Koda doesn't seem to be doing a lot to try to extricate himself. That was a great body shot with the left hand. A moment ago by Arce. And Cota's taken a pretty good beating. Here. We fought nine minutes in this fight, and six minutes have been fought in this corner. Exactly. It's Travieso, Travieso. And I tell you, the menace is bringing the leather tonight. No, he sure is. And Cota can't change the style of the fight. No, he just cannot seem to get himself out of that corner. And I can't believe this is by choice. End of the third round. Another big round for Arce. Round three turned out to be a repeat of round two. As once again, Arce just refused to let Ancona out of that corner. And you see their heads clashing. And Arce suffered a cut near the end of that round. And it looked like a pretty bad cut, Barry, as he went back to his corner. And Arce starts out this fight, uh, this round, still with his back to the ropes, but not in his own corner. Takes a, takes a pretty good left hand from Arce, and now here he is again. Well, uh, 
I just, he's got to get out of there. If this fight continues like this, Anke Ancona, who's never been stopped before, is going to get knocked out tonight. Can't generate any offense. Arce is just leaning on him. And then taking a half step back and punching it real. Good body shot. Best body shot. He really ripped into that one. Had great leverage on it. Brought it up to underneath. And that one was legal, by the way. Yes, <laughs> quite. Now, there was a chance for and go to to step out or spin out. He didn't do it. Maybe he's hoping Arce's going to punch himself out, but I told you about the conditioning process that Arce put himself through for this fight. And I don't expect that to be a factor. 30 years old or whatever, Jorge Arce is punching nonstop here now. And a lot of those punches are getting there. Very few are caught on the gloves. Good body shot again. Dug in with the left hand by Arce. Incidentally, that cut was not ruled a headbutt, even though we believe it was a headbutt. Arce has not been in the center of the ring at all. This body bruising that he's taking is going to take its toll. It has to. Now I put a trying to answer back. Yeah, and I'm just not sure what Ancota's plan was going in here. I mean, he's had opportunities to get out of there, and he hasn't. There was another headbutt a moment ago. Ancota just taking a beating here. there he had a chance to spin out and didn't. When the ref breaks him, let's see if he tries to go out to the ring center. Nope, he just stands there, right in the corner, against the ropes. Now they're in the middle of the ring for the first time, and Akota still doesn't seem to rock that. Backs right into the, into the neutral corner this time. So there it's more of the same, just a different location, and another big round for Arce. He's finally coming back, back now. We welcome you back, and the word in Arce's corner is hook to the body, hook to the head. That's what's worked so far. Why not? You know, uh, that cut that he suffered was not bleeding as he went back to the corner, and, and Beristain really didn't even have to work on that. And got him in the middle of the ring for the first time since probably the first 30 seconds of the fight. I thought I got had a really good first round. Yeah, I did too. But since then, all Travieso. And all of it caught on the ropes. Well, we mentioned that Ancota had to lose a pound. I normally wouldn't think much of that. And again, he just lays on the ropes and just waits for Arce to come back. If it's a tactic, it's a bad tactic. This fight's just looking rich like a question of time. You know, I, I really thought that Jorge Arce was, in, in reading his interviews and hearing what he was saying before this fight was completely different. You know, when we talked to him before other fights, he'd jump up on a table or scream, I want Vasquez or I want Darchinian or whatever, and go crazy. But this fight, he was saying, you know, well, I always try to entertain the fans, but this looks like it might be a rough night. <laughs> I think he expected that. Well, he, it certainly hasn't been, and a lot of that has to do with him, but part of it has to do with his opponent. Uh, and Cota there caught him with a right uppercut coming in. <laughs> well, I'll say one thing. Arce's not fighting like the typical Nacho Bernstein fighter. And no, he's not. not. And again, it was a headbutt, and Cota complaining about it. They are, of course, fighting shoulder to shoulder, head to head, so it's, it's gonna happen. Again, 
Again, a double right hand to the head. Arsene not doing the hook to the body as Nacho Berstein suggested. There it was. But again, what strikes me is that is not just giving himself any chance to win. There are, there are just times when he just looks so gassed in that corner, Don Cota. And just taking an awful beating, and he continues to do so. Another big round for our set. As round six begins, take a look at what happened in round number five. As Arce, again, came forward, pushed him into that corner, and that's where much of the round stayed. And we start round six, and it does start in the center of the ring. Let's see how long it stays there. Since, since that loss to A.J. Benal that I mentioned, the Philippine fighter, which was in 2006, Angoda has reeled off six wins in a row. And I, I really don't think he was expecting this kind of whirlwind in front of him. No, I think that's part of it. But again, I, I feel like he really hasn't given himself much chance. It's easy for me to say I'm sitting 30 feet away. It's so like right there, he could get out of there. And He's not. Well, it, it would seem logical that those body punches of Arce have taken something away from the legs of him. shots to the head. Both hands at his sides. Now he tries to fight off the ropes. The fight that Angota fought in the first round, which was a long range, showing angles, Jumping in, surprising Arce here and there. I thought it looked then like it was going to give Arce some real problems tonight. But he, Arce successfully turned the style of the fight around almost immediately in the second round. And there you see that face just looking spent. Yeah, I don't think Ancota has an awful lot left. He's pushing whatever punches he throws, for the most part, are just being pushed. That was a wild right hand. And he's taken five punches for every one he throws. Arce said even if he wins the fight, he wants to be out of the sport within the next year. But there will certainly be more. And Cody just took a long look at the referee here. End of six. Technology comes to the ring card signs. Absolutely. Electronic ring card signs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I like it. So the question is, what does Ancora have left? Yeah, I watched him. It looked to me like I didn't like the way he went back to his corner. He kind of stumbled back to the corner. Yeah, and, and, and there was one little bit of action right toward the end of the round. He took a long look at referee Samuel Villarreal. Interesting that Ancora just let out a big woo. He yelled over his corner. And in RC's corner, they're saying that he's spent. And you could probably get him. Now look out, look at Ancota come out now. All of a sudden he's full of energy. Well, we'll see. That's how he started the first round. There's another headbutt. Is this a renewed effort by Ancota? 
Are you telling me he played possum for five rounds? I've only seen it happen once. And somehow I don't think it, it did not involve anybody named Ancoda. Good body shot again by Arce, wild right hand by Ancoda. Unusual too, because it was with the right hand. Most of those great body shots from Arce with the left hand. Crowd, needless to say, very much in support of Arce. Body shot in the right hand by Arce. They have done really a great job on that cut over Arce's eye. That was a cut that looked to be pretty serious when it happened, but just a terrific job. And there's another headbutt. Hasn't really been a factor. The two have been lunging in at each other the whole fight. Now there's blood coming from the side of the right eye of Angoda. And now they're gonna go to the doctor to look at this. The, the referee is actually looking for a doctor. This is a big long rest for Angoda. Finally, the doctor comes into the ring. Of course, if this fight is stopped, we go to the cards and uh, RSA a sure winner at this point. Uh, no question about it. And the referee and the doctor are having a good, long conversation about it. I'll say they are. Fight is all stop it. And I think, although supposedly he doesn't speak English, it looked to me like Ancona said thank you. No question, unless that's, the, that's what it means in Indonesian also. Well, it was a complete victory. There's no question about that for our sake. Not a pretty fight. He is going to win a world title now at 115 pounds. And then Cota waving to the fans. He was just outgunned tonight. Officially, they will go to the cards. I So it is ruled a headbutt. You want me to go in the ring now? And we will go to the cards. And I can't imagine this ending in any other way, but the guy in the black hat, guy in the black hat, I think, is gonna win this fight. Yep, there's no question that the Sinaloa Cowboy, the mischievous one, Travieso, has got himself another world title. And uh, retirement will just have to be put off for a little bit longer. And with it, that television career. Traviezo means menace, Spanish. And I believe Lupe Contreras has the decision right now, and uh, they tend in the meantime to Ancotu's cut. But I don't think there's any question about the winner, and here's Lupe Contreras to tell us. Damas y caballeros, después de consultar con el médico de turno, el referee Sami Viruet para la contienda por causa de un choque de cabezas accidental. Y de acuerdo con las reglas de la OMB, consultamos a la tarjeta oficial para determinar un ganador. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Sami Viruet stops the bout after consulting with the ringside position due to an accidental clash of the heads. And in accordance with the rules of the WBO, we go to the scorecards to determine a winner. El primer juez anotó. 58 a 56, Judge One scores it 58 to 56. Y los dos jueces entregan tarjetas idénticas, two judges scored about identically, a 60 a 54, they scored 60 to 54. For the winner, 
by way of technical unanimous decision. Para el ganador por decisión unánime técnica. Y ahora, el nuevo campeón peso super mosca de la OMB. And now, the new WBO super flyweight champion of the world. De los mochis, Sinaloa, México. Jorge. A lot of fight that actually was a little bit closer than uh, we might have expected, but nonetheless, a unanimous technical decision is the way this would go into the books for Jorge Travioso Arce. And he becomes the WBO super flyweight champion, the champion at 115 pounds. It is his fourth championship. And this one, he did everything he needed to do in this fight. He took over the fight. First 30 seconds of the fight were fought in the center of the ring, and I thought Anki Ankota did pretty well in those 30 seconds. And after that, it went pretty well downhill for him as Arce took over and just gave an awful beating in the corner. I don't think there was any question about the outcome of this one. And Arce is again a champion in that retirement that he talked about. Should he lose this fight, will be on hold at least for a little while. He did say that he didn't want to fight beyond this year, but he will go on certainly from here as he picks up another championship. This one at 115 pounds. He looked very sharp in doing it. He did sustain a cut over the right eye, but that was taken care of. And right now, the champion is with Rich Barada. Rich. Jorge, congratulations. You are a world champion once again. How do you feel about that? Felicitaciones, otra vez campeón mundial. Yeah, I, I knew new champion. I am be happy. Esto se lo dedico a mi bebé porque viene, está por nacer. No sé si nació ahorita o mañana o está por nacer. For my baby, he's either going to born tonight or tomorrow. We don't know. He might have been born already. Felicidades dos. <laughs> or two. Now, first round a little bit slow for you, but then you turned the fight around. You got him in this corner every round. What happened? El primer round difícil porque como que no lo encontrabas, pero ya lo encontraste en el segundo round. Sí, fue una pelea que lo iba moliendo poco a poco y sentía que me iba imponiendo. Yo creo que si no hubiera sido por la cabeza, dos rounds más lo hubiera acabado. You know, I felt that I was really, he was slowing down. I was hitting him with everything I had. I knew he was going to go down eventually. If we went him before the cut, I would have knocked him out. You know, for an older fighter, you fight pretty good. Retirement, you'll have to say goodbye to retirement for a while. I am very strong. I am happy. Estoy pasando por un momento excelente. Y ahora que está cerca el retiro que lo ha anunciado, ya no me quiero ir. You know, now that I said I, I, want to, I retire, I don't want to do it anymore. After something like this, it's just great. Congratulations, Felicidad. Thank you so much. I love you, baby. Yes. New world champion once again, Barry. And so there's a happy champion in Jorge Arce. Jorge Arce is a winner, and he does so in spectacular fashion. I think he finished off his man Anki on Kotu, and he did so in no uncertain terms. It'll go as a technical decision, and I think he's probably right. Had this fight have gone on, probably would have been a knockout victory, but he'll take it. Thank you very much, and we'll be back.